Welcome. This is uh, the Algebra 2 end of course practice test. The practice test 1, I should say. Question number 49. Now, uh, there'll be a different explanation to this at the end of this section. So if you hear me in the middle of the video going, hi, this is Practi Algebra 2 practice test question number 49 is because I actually cut two versions but I realized that my second explanation is sort of long uh, because people told me it was really long so I'm just gonna tag it onto the end if you want to watch it this one probably will go less than halfway through the video so shouldn't be nearly as long now the question says Carlos is playing a game using tiles and I mentioned in my other video and I'll say it again they're dominoes but you can't say dominoes in Tennessee on a state test because that means gambling right so we're not allowed to promote gambling so we'll say tiles and lie to ourselves each tile is divided into two groups of dots. That's because they're dominoes. He needs to select a tile with a group of three dots or a group of five dots to be able to play. The tiles he can choose from are shown below. Um, Carlos will randomly select one tile at a time without replacement, which means he'll keep it in his hand because he's just trying to start the game. This whole problem is about him starting to play, not actually playing, uh, until he selects a tile with either a group of three dots or a group of five dots. What is the probability that he will need to select a total of four tiles in order to play? Now, let's organize our tiles or dominoes into winners and losers. Winners would get us to start to play. Losers will keep us not playing. So the first tile, of course, is a winner because it has a 3 in it. Second tile has a 3 and a 5. It's a double winner. Uh, no for the third one. No for the fourth one. Uh, the fifth one, yeah, that's a winner. So that should be a 3 there. Sorry about that. That's the worst 3 ever. Uh, the sixth one is not. The last one is. So I've got four winners. And as far as losers go, one, two, three losers. So what I have to do is... a determine how, how what the likelihood is that I'll pull those loser tiles first and then finally pull the real tile. So I'll look at the chances of doing it from an in, from a uh, compound probability standpoint. And remember, when I compound the problem by doing more than one, that means I need to, need to make more than one ratio because it's compounding the complexity of the problem. So in my f first setup, I need to pull a loser. I've got a three out of seven chance of pulling a loser. Similar to dating, I guess. It's probably like 5 to 7. So I've got 3 out of 7. Now I have to pull my second loser. From here, I have 2 chances out of 6 tiles. Because remember, he's not pulling anymore. I mean, he's keeping them out, so he's not putting them back. Carlos is at least a little bit smart about this. He's not going to keep doing it over and over again. Uh, from there, I have to think, well, I have 1 left, and there's 5 to choose from. Seems very unlikely, doesn't it? And finally... He's got a 4 out of 4 chance of picking the one that he wants. Now, just looking at the answers logically, if he has to do all of that, he has to pick every loser before a winner, it seems very unlikely. So A and B seem like they're, uh, they're probably not the answers anyway because those, the probability is way too high in those answers. I would think it would be the smallest one, which is C. Uh, and if you work the math out and you do 3 7 times 2 6 times 1 5 times 4 over 4, you do get the 1 over 35 that you were looking for. So that's a quick way to get the answer. And if you are wanting to torture yourself for figuring out a way of like how you come up with how many possible choices there are and then looking at it as a uh, part over the whole, just keep listening and the rest of that will be in the next part of the video. So if you're not going to do it, which is probably smart, good luck. Welcome, this is the Tennessee Algebra 2 end of course practice test number one. Question number 49. Carlos is playing a game using tiles. Each tile is divided into two groups of dots. We call those dominoes where I come from, but dominoes are related to gambling. Tennessee can't support it, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, he needs to select a tile with a group of three dots or a group of five dots to be able to play. So really, he just has to pull, reach into the bag or pull one of them out, however they're doing it, just so he can start the game. This isn't even him playing the game. He's just trying to get to start. In order to do that, he has to pull a tile out that has a three or a five on it, whatever. Um, he's going to choose them one at a time. In case the first one he doesn't pull out... Uh, say he pulls one out that doesn't have a three or a five, he's not going to stop or put that one back in because it would take forever. They're trying to speed it up and start the game. So he's going to not replace any. They want to know what the probability is that he'll need to select four tiles in order to play. So before we start, we should look at how many total tiles there are. And if you can count it out, you can see there are seven total tiles. Now we're going to look at tiles that can get us to start. So we're going to refer to these as winners. He wins on the first tile. He wins on the second tile. He'd actually win either way on this one because it has both. He'd win on the third tile, and he'd win on four. So we've got four winners that could get him started in the game. And for the other side, we're going to look at the losers. Ones that he can't start the game if he pulls out. Probably ones that are going to annoy him if he's excited about playing the game. So we've got one, two, 
three losers. So out of total, uh, a total of seven dominoes, he has three that will win, or four that will win, and three that will not get him started, so they're considered losers. The question asks, what is the probability that he will need to select a total of four tiles in order to play? Now, if you just use a little logical thinking here, you can eliminate a couple answers very quickly. He has to pull, in order for this to work, he has to pull all three of the losers randomly before he pulls one that wins. And there's more that win than lose. So it is very unlikely that this is going to happen. We're going to look at the total number of possibilities of those things happening in just a second. But first things first, we're going to think about, well, it seems really, really unlikely that he'll pull all three losers randomly before he pulls the fourth one. And A and B choices seem really uh, unlikely just due to the fact that he uh, has to pull out so many and there's so many different combinations. So you could say that A and B are probably not the right answers. Just based on the logic of pulling three out out of all the total combinations is crazy time. So seems unlikely, doesn't it? Uh, but it is what it is. Now, in order to figure out exactly how many, what we're going to do is look at probability in the sense of total outcomes on the bottom of our ratio here and on the top we're going to look at favorable ones. We consider favorable in this case because of the way they're asking favorable outcomes would be all of the outcomes where we pull out all of the loser dominoes before we pull out one of the winner dominoes. So we have to look at the number of possibilities where we pull out all three of the losers first and then finally pull out a winner. It would be helpful for us to get some idea of the total so what we're going to do is look at how many combinations there are for uh, seven uh, dominoes. So of my dominoes, if I have domino one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, my next domino, if I pulled one out first, could be two, three, four, five, six, or seven. We'd go on from two, if I pulled one and then two, I could pull three, four, five. It's really long. This is a tree diagram. I'm going to do a much smaller tree diagram, but I'm just giving you an idea of the immense number of possible combinations. So let's do one, just a tree diagram for our losers, which is really important because we need to think about all possible combinations of dominoes that have those three losers first. So we need to figure out how many ways we can arrange my three loser dominoes. So if I'm going to do this, I'm going to tree diagram it out and say I could pull domino loser one, domino loser 2 and domino loser 3 in any one of those orders. So the first one would say if I chose domino 1 first I could choose either domino 2 next or domino 3. If I chose domino 2 first I could pull domino 1 or domino 3. If I chose 3 I could do 1 or 2. And from there I'm pretty much locked in on what my next choice is going to be. If I chose 1 then I chose 2 my only choice is 3. If I chose 1 and 3, I get 2. 2 and 1 would give me 3. 2 and 3 would give me 1. 3 and 1 would give me 2. And then 3 and 2 would give me 1. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 total possibilities. 6 total possibilities of how I can arrange my losers. Now, the uh, reality is I can write this in a different way. Counting theory would say that we do 3 times 2 times 1. This can also be written as 3 factorial. 3 factorial means you're given 3 possibilities, how many combinations or how many total um, outcomes could there possibly be. So in this case 3 times 2 times 1 gives me 6. Now in order to figure out what we're going to do, do next we can use that logic of the 3 factorial thing to figure out the total number of, of outcomes in general. So I take my 7 here from up here, and I'm going to do 7 factorial, and if I do 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, what I'm going to end up with is 5,040. And I can apply this directly over to my probability idea. So my bottom is going to be, or my denominator is going to be 5,040. Now on top, I need to think about how many combinations I have left, or how many combinations start out with me pulling all three of the loser dominoes first, or loser tiles, or whatever they're called. Now, it would be easy to just assume you just go over to 6 and put it on top of 540, but that's not true. These are just possible ways that I could organize my loser dominoes. If I'm going to pull out all domino combinations, I need to consider 
after I pull out those three, how many other choices do I have for the next four? So say I did a uh, three, two, one. Like I pulled out loser domino number three, then I pulled out loser domino number two, then I pulled out loser domino number one. Well, I have more options for that because I could pull out winner domino number one next, or number two, or three, or four. And from there, they would continue on down the line until we ran out all seven dominoes. In order to speed up that process a little bit so we don't have to spend 10 hours making tree diagrams, I'm just going to say that I know there's four possibilities left, so I'm going to apply to my three factorial, I'm going to do a four factorial, because that'll consider all the ways I can arrange those four, and it'll tack it directly onto the back of all the ways I can arrange those three. Four factorial, of course, is four times three times two times one. So four factorial is 24. Now, all I need to do now is combine those two concepts together so I know how many ways I can arrange my six losers, how I can arrange my four winners after I finish those six losers because it locks it in. These are my only choices. It's limiting things. So I'm going to do 24 times 6 and get 144 favorable outcomes. And I'm going to put that as my favorable choice. So on the numerator of my little ratio that I just made, I'm going to say there's 144 favorable outcomes there. Then I'm just going to do 144 divided by uh, 5,040. I may need to convert it to a fraction. And my final answer is 1 over 30 5. So my answer to this question is C. So if you think about, if you have something that's so restricting, like in this case, you had to pull all the losers before you pull a winner to be considered favorable, all you have to do is figure out how many ways you can arrange the losers in the front, multiply it by how many ways after you arrange all those losers, how you can arrange the winners, put that, com combine those possibilities or outcomes together, put it over the total number of outcomes that you have, you get your probability, and that should uh, get you to the right answer. So if you use a little bit of thought before you dive into formulas and things, I think you can get this answer not that, it would not be all that difficult to get this correct. So good luck.